Pop-Up Theatre presents The Return to Baker Street, hosted by Alexandria Tan. Welcome, listeners, to a very special Sherlockian interview episode, The Return to Baker Street. With me, I have the stars of Pop-Up Theatre's Sherlock Holmes factual fiction podcast plays, Paul Zaraga and Tom Godfrey, who play Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson, respectively. It's been a year since their last interview, and they're popping back to celebrate and gear up for season two, of which his first episode is airing New Year's Day 2022. Welcome back, and hello, lads. Hello. Hi. Ah, it's great to hear your voices again. So, it's been more than a year since you have played Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. What was it like jumping back into the role? Did it come back to you naturally? Uh, Paul? Yeah, I think so. It did come quite naturally, um, despite the year's gap. Once I'd got the script and gone through that, um, I listened to one of the previous plays that we'd done in the in the first series. And, you know, when I'm delivering the lines of Holmes, I try to remind myself that, you know, this guy is uh, intolerant, he's pompous, doesn't suffer fools gladly. And uh, hopefully that comes across, um, you know, when I'm delivering the lines. But yeah, I think so. I think it's uh, like riding a bike. Right. And what about you, Tom? Did it take you some time to adjust? Yes, um, it did take some time to adjust. Um, it certainly didn't come back naturally. There were two things that were difficult. The first one was remembering what Dr. Watson's voice was like. I mean, it's similar to my own, but it, it, it was Dr. Watson is posher voice and deeper than my normal voice. So trying to remember exactly what, what it was like from previous episodes was difficult. My trigger word is uh, Holmes. So, um, yeah, trying to get the voice was difficult. And also, because I've moved now, um, I was in Istanbul for the recordings of the previous and I could use my office. Um, but I'm doing a MA in Applied Theatre in Exeter. So I had to find somewhere um, to do the recordings. I'm living in a lodgings and I I didn't want to use there because the the noise and other people... Um, so I had to go to the university and find a room that was free and relatively quiet and also do the recordings fairly quickly because I was worried that somebody would, you know, interrupt or uh, use the room. So, yeah, it was uh, it took a bit of practicalities getting back to it. Well, I'm glad you got there in the end. So moving right along, the first episode of season two is Sherlock Holmes in Son of Sam, which is obviously based on the murders perpetrated by the then-unknown serial killer David Berkowitz, who terrorized the citizens of New York City across 13 months from 1976 to 1977. Tom, did you know anything about the case before you received the script for the episode? No, I didn't know um, anything about the case, to be honest. Um, In 1976-77... I was at school doing my A-levels and probably as a teenager I was interested in other things and that the story didn't register with me at all. Um, So yeah, it was interesting receiving the script and reading about it. And what about you, Paul? I feel like you might have maybe known about it. Well, no, I didn't know too much about The Son of Sam. Um, I had some bits of information and um, I think that was largely based on... um, when the, the Spike Lee film came out, The Summer of Sam, um, I'd seen a trailer, I think, somewhere. And um, so I knew that there was this killer in America in the uh, summer of 77 who was preying upon, you know, girls of a certain age with long brown hair. But I think that was about all. And um, But like with all these scripts, you know, I'm, I'm learning a lot. Um, I'm learning a lot from the script. And then I do background reading and, and try and find out as much as I can. So it's a, it's a real learning experience and that's what makes it so interesting oh yeah definitely i know i learn a lot from the cases in these episodes and i have a lot of fun doing research and reading up about these true crime cases as well so tom now take us through the process of doing a sherlock holmes podcast play does scott tell you what he's writing and what cases will be tackled in advance no scott uh doesn't tell us what um cases Sherlock will be tackling next. Um, So it always comes as a surprise and it's always very different and it's very difficult to predict. 
uh, because the time and venue is, appears to be totally random. I mean, for example, we can go from Whitechapel in London during Victorian times to the heydays of Hollywood and then suddenly to Europe in World War Two, and then back out to the Wild West and the frontier um, and then to this uh, Sherlock Holmes episode, which is um, based in New York City in 1977. So it's always very uh, unpredictable, which is great. I mean, the time and venue, Sherlock Holmes can move all over the place. Yeah, and I think that's kind of the fun of it. And what about from your perspective, Paul? I know for Sherlock, it can be quite an involved process and a lot of back and forth uh, between you and Scott when you're recording an episode. Well, first of all, Scott sends the script through um, and then usually pronunciation files, uh, usually names that might be difficult to pronounce so that everyone's pronouncing them the same way. Um, and then when I start recording, it usually takes me two to three days and I record each line or each bit two or three times and then Scott will choose the delivery that he likes best. Um, and then Scott might send through lines that he wants redoing with a voice message giving directions. And then when that's done, um, we wait to hear the final version edited together with sound effects. And, and that's always um, you know, a revelation, a very pleasant surprise, because well, the only other actor I know that's involved is Tom as Dr. Watson. And um, so it's the first time I get you know, this complete picture of the other actors who's involved, etc., yeah, it's always really exciting to hear it all come together in the end. So since you aren't in the know of the other cases to come this season, do you, Paul, or should I say Sherlock, have any guesses or predictions on what Holmes may take on? Well, that's a, that's a question. Um, well, up until now, the plays have dealt with famous real-life crimes where there may be ambiguity, uncertainty. So, for example, the shooting of John F. Kennedy, the Black Dahlia. And Holmes and Watson are transported out of their time and out of place. So from Victorian London to 60s America, 70s America, Second World War. So, I don't know, what about the murders of Tupac and the notorious B.I.G., uh, a very contemporary setting, East Coast, West Coast, hip-hop rivalry. You know, Holmes would find himself completely out of his comfort zone. Uh, Marilyn Monroe's death, um, often well put down to suicide. She took an overdose of barbiturates, or did she? Was she getting too close to John F. Kennedy? What really happened? Um, and also, this is a bit sort of uh, close to me. I'm very interested in, you know, literature. Edgar Allan Poe uh, is believed by some to have been killed at the behest of corrupt politicians. But who knows? Who knows? Watch this space. <laughs> yes, indeed. So let's close off this interview with one last question that I think the viewers will want to know. What can we expect from the first episode this coming season? And no spoilers, please. Well, um, you can expect darkness with an extra helping of dark. Uh, up there with the Black Dahlia for darkness, I think. Now, obviously, serial killing isn't a bundle of laughs, but uh, I think what makes these plays so refreshing is the, is the context. And uh, once again, Holmes and Watson are not just trying to solve a crime, but they're also battling with a sceptical New York police force. And it's this you know, juxtaposition of let's say, the brash and the, the very methodical, you know, the NYCPD and, and Holmes's idiosyncrasies um, that make The Son of Sam and the previous season's plays so enthralling. Yeah. And what about you, Tom? Maybe we can get some insight from Dr. Watson on what they can expect. Yeah, it's, it's set in New York City, 1977, financial crisis. It's a very bloody and violent crime. There are a large number of suspects that Sherlock has to consider. I mean, often in, in these cases, there is one suspect and you have to kind of work out how it was done and why it was done. 
but this one is quite complicated in that sense. And uh, Dr. Watson in particular, I think, struggles to work out what's happening. And that actually is um, part of the drama because Holmes takes great delight in keeping things, keeping Dr. Watson in, in the dark and kind of mocking him for his lack of understanding, his, his lack of ability to follow. So he's very irritating and he deliberately uh, irritates Watson, I think. Yes, I think that's the little dynamic that they have going. All right, that brings us to the end of our interview with Paul and Tom. Thanks for chatting with us. I'm sure you all can't wait to hear them both return as Sherlock and Dr. Watson in season two. Now, before we go, we have a little surprise for you, our listeners and avid Sherlockians. We're giving you the chance to win a cameo role in the next episode of Pop-Off Theatre's Sherlock Holmes podcast play. All you have to do is click the link in the description or show notes and fill up the form just some simple info so that we can get in contact with you if you win. We're taking entries for the next two weeks until the 2nd of January 2022, and we'll pick one of you at random. So act fast if you want to hear your voice in Season 2, and see your name join our stellar cast in the credits. All the best! And remember to keep your eyes peeled for Episode 1 of Season 2, Sherlock Holmes in Son of Sam, airing January 1st, 2022. What a way to start off the year! And for more Holmesian-related shows and interviews, you can catch our podcast and more on all major streaming platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Audible, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, YouTube, and wherever else you get your dose of podcasts. We now have a Twitter account for our Sherlock Holmes Factual Fiction podcast plays, so go follow us there at Sherlock Pod Play, that is Sherlock P-O-D-P-L-A-Y, for exclusive updates on the show. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at popup underscore theatre and catch us on Facebook and, of course, YouTube for all our latest happenings. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already so you don't miss any of our shows, trailers, interviews, behind-the-scenes videos, and more. Thank you for all your support this year and we can't wait to show you what we've been working on for 2022. This is your host, Alexandra, signing off. See you in the new year!